Well, welcome back. Oil prices this morning are fractionally uh, moving the uh, level of crude right now at $91.94 a barrel, down about 1 percent. Brent crude, meanwhile, at 97.47 is down one and two-thirds percent. Both topped $100 a barrel yesterday for the first time since 2014 following Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Joining me right now is Continental Resources founder and chairman Harold Hamm. Harold, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Let me first get your assessment of the situation in Ukraine and get your take on what that means in terms of oil supplies. Does it impact Continental in any way? Well, thank you, Maria. It's uh, awfully good to be with you. Uh, we're seeing prices uh, normalize again. I think yesterday we, we saw some more premium prices, obviously, in both uh, our U.S. price, uh, WTI, and, and Brent. And that's going away, as you can see. So we're back to about the normal price that it was, around $92 before all this started. But, you know, it's very disturbing. Uh, I can understand uh, the reaction in the markets yesterday. Uh, you know, the stock market, and as it fell, and, and oil prices as it went up. Uh, when was the last time you saw an invasion like this? Uh, this is, this is uh, very disturbing. Yeah, I mean, we are getting breaking news right now that the European Union is planning to hit Vladimir Putin and Minister Lavrov with sanctions, although President Biden has spared Russia's crucial energy exports from any sanctions. Tucked in the bottom of these sanctions is a general license allowing Russian energy supplies to still be bought and sold. The U.S. is also importing uh, oil from Russia. And, of course, this means Russia's main source of income remains intact. Biden sanctioned the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which doesn't make any difference to Putin, which, because all of the other pipelines are, are, are open uh, in the region. What are your thoughts on the U.S.'s response to the Ukraine invasion? Well, there's certainly uh, a whole lot to think about in the entire policy, uh, U.S. energy policy right now. Uh, you know, when... Uh, our president uh, thinks about uh, supply. Immediately, he runs off to talk to Saudi Arabia instead of uh, even thinking about doing anything about the failed energy policy that he put in place here in the U.S. So I want to call on, on the president and this administration today to, you know, talk to our own producers in this country about what they can do to uh, straighten up the policy here. He put into place moratorium on, on federal permitting on all federal lands and, and, and also moratorium on leasing federal lands. I mean, that, that's, that's killing, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, we, we had uh, energy independence in this country. They're letting that slip away. I mean, everything about their energy, in, energy policy today is not right. Also call on him to... Uh, pull back on all these harmful regulations that they're proposing today. So <clears throat> it just is, uh, we're seeing the uh, ramifications of this energy policy both here in the U.S. and internationally. Uh, so it's, it's a failed policy, and uh, uh, certainly you, you, you're right to have all the concern that you, you have today on it. Yeah, but Harold, it's not just the ban on federal lands and the uh, shutting down the XL pipeline. It's the priority of climate change. Joe Biden wants to put the overseer of all banks uh, in place. Uh, and, and she has said in the past she does not want banks lending to fossil fuel companies. And what did we learn this week, Harold? We learned this week that the Blackstone Group will no longer fund oil and gas exploration. This is an extraordinary point that the Blackstone uh, Group is doing. It, it, this was one of its biggest businesses. And now Blackstone says it will no longer back projects or firms that explore for or produce oil and gas. What does that mean to a company like Continental Resources, for example? Well, that means restraint of capital that's uh, necessary to be plowed into uh, this industry. And, and certainly Mr. Pink has been on the wrong side of that. But you have to follow the money. And if you do, you find out that that's the talk, but they've been out there uh, investing and, and putting money into capital projects. So, you know, you have to follow the money somewhat, Maria. But it's it's the wrong thing to think about and wrong thing to do, uh, certainly. So 
Uh, yes, there's, there's a lot to be concerned about. Uh, and I also uh, saw uh, uh, Energy Czar, uh, John Kerry's comments, uh, you know, about emissions, uh, you know, while this war was going on, on over there. I think that's the last thing on Ukrainians' mind as they run for safety about, you know, the emissions, uh, you know, that's happening in that, that country today. So there's a, there's a lot wrong with the, the policies of, of this administration, but, you know, it, uh, it certainly, uh, there's a lot to be uh, changed and talk about. So anyway, uh, they need to come to the table and, and come up with some uh, very good energy policy. What are the priorities at Continental in terms of CapEx spending today? You know, our priorities, we, we have to do what the market wants. We're a public company, and, and certainly if you uh, raise your CapEx too much, you're going to get punished. Uh, you know, uh, our recent quarter, we announced a 2022 budget, uh, about 15 percent, and from 2021, even with the, the properties that the new properties that we've acquired and the bigger footprint that we have. And and we were punished for it. So <clears throat> we have to be responsive to uh, the market and uh, and un understand all the all the forces that apply to us. And 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 certainly uh, we're doing all we can right now with, uh, you know, all the all the elements that we have uh, have to work under all the fundamentals and and, and yeah and doing everything we can at this point. Well, obviously, oil prices are, are up at elevated levels, but Joe Biden is shifting the blame uh, onto the oil companies. Here's what he said yesterday addressing big oil. Watch this. American oil and gas companies should not, should not exploit this moment to hike their prices, to raise profits. You know, in our sanctions package, we specifically designed to allow energy payments to continue. We are closely monitoring energy supplies for any disruption. Harold, what about that? Can oil companies uh, basically exploit this moment and send prices higher? Maria, I'll tell you today that there's not one American, I don't believe, in this country, not one, that doesn't understand what's happened uh, with supply in America, how it's been curtailed, and it, it's the failure of this administration uh, as they throttle back supplies in this country. Uh, you can lay increased prices at their feet. I predicted, uh, you know, before this administration had gotten very far down the road uh, back in uh, 2020 that. We would see $6 gas in this country if they continued these policies. And, man, we're close to it. In some places, we've got over, over $6 a gallon. So the chickens have come back to roost. It's time to change those policies. And I'm calling them out to do that, that very same thing, change those policies that have gotten us here with supply in this country. But, but do you think this is partly intentional, Harold? They want to basically choke out fossil fuels. So the more expensive it gets, is that going to trigger behavior on the part of individuals and corporations to go greener? Well, you hit the nail right on the head, Maria, and that's exactly what their intention was. But, you know, this is an evolution, uh, you know, that uh, we're talking about. It takes a long time. And, and certainly you can't get the cart in front of the horse. We're going to see demand for fossil fuels, for energy, for an awfully long time. And I understand the need to deal with the climate. Uh, you know, you can't uh, continue building all these uh, coal-fired uh, uh, generation plants in, in Russia, uh, China, uh, India, and, uh, and fight, uh, you know, the... Uh, the climate. So, anyway, that's that's the biggest problem uh, mm. uh, with the whole thing. All right, Harold. We will leave it there. Great to have you this morning. Thanks so much, Harold Ham, for joining us. We'll be watching this developing situation, sir. Thank you. Thank you.